Puss in Boots. Once upon a time there lived a poor miller who had three sons. When he died, all he owned was divided between his sons. The eldest had the mill, the second had the donkey, and the youngest son had the miller's cat. The boy was very fond of the cat, but he could not see how the cat could ever make him rich. As he softly touched the cat, she said, Don't worry, master. If you do what I tell you, you will see how much I can do for you. First, get me a large bag and a pair of boots. The son of the miller took some money he had and bought a large bag and a fine pair of yellow colored boots. The cat put on her new pair of boots and at once went out into the garden. This was the pussycat in boots. She picked up some carrots from the garden and put it in the bag. Then she went off across the fields until she found a rabbit hole. She put the bag down its mouth wide open so that the carrot could be seen. Then she hid herself behind low hedge. Soon a fat grey rabbit showed his head out of the hole. He smelt the fresh carrots and jumped into the bag to eat it. The pussycat in boots jumped immediately from the hedge and quickly tied the strings of the bag together and the fat rabbit was caught. Then Puss carried the bag on her shoulder and came to the king's palace wearing her yellow boots. She bowed before the king and said, Your Majesty, I have brought you a fat rabbit from the estate of my master, the Prince of Carabas. The king was surprised at the sight of the yellow boots. But he did not show his surprise. He accepted the gift. The next day, Puss put a handful of grain into her bag and went out into the fields. She put a bag on the ground and lay down beside it, pretending to be dead. Two parrots came and they started to eat the grains. Pussycat in boots waited for the right moment and quickly tied the strings of the bag, catching both the parrots inside. Once more, she set off for the palace and presented herself before the king. My master, the Prince of Carabas, begs you to accept these two parrots, said Pussycat in Boots, bowing with respect. Tell your master, said the king, that I am pleased to accept his gift. He must have a fine castle. Oh yes, it is very fine, said Puss, bowing before the king, and left him. As she went through the halls of the palace, she heard that the king and his daughter were going to drive beside the river that afternoon. Puss raced home to her master and told him about the visit to the king's palace. She then said to him, I want you to go and swim in the river. 
If anyone asks your name, you are to say that you are the Prince of Carabas. The miller's son left Puss in Boots to guard his boots. And went to swim in the river. Puss carefully hid the clothes under a <coughs> pile of stones and waited for the royal carriage. As the carriage came near, Puss ran out shouting, Help! Help! The Prince of Carabas is drowning! The king ordered the carriage to stop and ordered his servants to rescue the prince. Then Puss went up to the carriage with her hat in her hand. She bowed before the king and princess and said, We are indeed so grateful that you passed by. But alas, a thief has stolen my master's clothes. The king sent a servant to the palace to get a suit. When the miller's son put it on, he looked just like a prince. This is my master, the Prince of Carabas, said Puss to the king and princess as she graciously introduced the miller's son. We hope you will drive on and drive with the prince. It will be a pleasure, replied the king, and he invited the prince to ride in his carriage. Puss ran ahead of the carriage across the fields. When she met some haymakers, she warned them, when the king passes this way and enquires to whom this field belongs to, you are to say to the Prince of Carabas, your majesty. If you don't say so, you will be cut into little pieces. Now the land actually belonged to a terrible giant. He was feared by all people. Puss walked boldly into his castle. I have heard that you can turn yourself into any animal you wish. Is that true? asked the Puss calmly. Yes, of course, said the giant, full of pride. In a flash he became a roaring lion. Though Puss was terrified of the sight of the big lion, she continued bravely, It is amazing that you can become a big lion. But surely it would be difficult for you to change into a tiny creature such as a mouse. The giant said, Oh no, it is no problem at all. In an instant, he disappeared and became a tiny mouse. Puss sprang upon the tiny mouse and with one shake killed it. Thus the giant who became a tiny mouse died. At that very moment, the king's carriage came near the castle. You have a large estate and a fine castle, said the king to the miller's son. The king was told by the haymakers that the fields belonged to the prince. The king, princess and the miller's son and puss went inside the castle and sat down to a grand feast. This young man would become a good husband for my daughter. So the king turned to the miller's son saying, will you marry my daughter? The miller's son and the princess fell in love with each other. C.
soon they got married and lived together happily in the giant's castle. Puss in Boots lived in comfort for the rest of her days, and she never had to hunt again.